Hello everybody, so today I wanted to talk about worship, and the reason why is because mainly we did a Bible study, you know, every Sunday night we go to this Bible study, this house study, and we were talking about Zechariah, and we read, let me see, Zechariah 5, I think, and in there, a lot of what um, Zechariah overall was talking about was how worship affects your life and how your life affects your worship so that they're intertwined so what you believe what you believe in depends on what you put on a pedestal to worship or look at or care about so what does it mean to worship so the bible says in matthew 6 21 for where your treasure is there your heart will be also so what you focus on that's where your treasure is going to be so what does worship truly look like well, John 4, 23 says we worship in spirit and in truth. So the word spirit, I looked that up, is pneuma, and it means the seat of action. And if you're looking at that, the links I provided will be the second definition. So that's how we act with people, situations, and things. How much time we spend dedicated to the right action is the same time we spend on worship. So I'm not saying actions save you or any of that other stuff, but what I am saying is you know, you may be a Christian that worships horribly. <laughs> or you may be a Christian who has the worship, or you may be someone who understands and has the worship down but doesn't believe. In which case, you're not a Christian. <laughs> you have to believe in God. So there's that. It's right. It's, it's actions. All of your actions. Are you singing to God? Are you dancing because you're so happy about God? Are you... You know, doing your tithing, are you treating people right? Are you going out in dedication to what he has told you to do with your life? All of those things are worship. And so the other word here says we worship God in spirit and in truth. And truth here is the word aletheia. And it means not only spoken truth, but to speak the truth, but also the reality of the way things are. So knowing who you are and being honest about that, Getting into the Bible and knowing God, what he thinks about things, how things actually are going to work, uh, the reality of things that, go, that are going on around you. You have to look at what's real, not just what you want or what you would like, but what's real. Colossians 3.17 has a great worship of summary, and it says, And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. When you do something in the name of someone, it means to, to do that with the reputation or the ideals of that someone in mind. So it's not just like, I do this in the name of God, and it's I'm doing whatever I want. It's I'm doing this in the name of God, and I'm having those ideals. I'm here as a representation of that person, so we have to be careful with that. So as a Christian, we worship with every action or inaction, every song, every dance, every way, every time we help someone, with every honest conversation we have some, with someone, with every moment we take to reflect on ourselves to learn about why we do or do not do something. With everything, we worship God. So we worship Him with our whole selves. So I was doing research for this. I was reading Colossians 3, and it really helped me kind of understand worship better in a way. So it talks about, you know, how to treat people, what to, um, you know, to praise God, to thank God. When you are thankful to God, that's worship. When you praise God, that's worship. When you walk down the road and your focus is, what do you want me to do, God? That's worship. Whenever you help the poor, whenever you don't help the poor that's not worship right so if you help the poor that's worship if you help somebody out along the side of the road that's worship all of these things we we worship god with our bodies and we worship god with our minds with everything that we are and that comes out and that is why it comes out in our life and that's why our life is affected by our worship because it's done in everything so this is just a simple little one today, guys. Let me know what you think down in the comments. I think also this does have... You can see what people worship based on how they live their life. Right? And that's also a biblical concept. 
So when people are living their life lying and manipulating and, you know, trying to get one up on people, being insulting, things like that, then they worship themselves. They don't worship God because that's the opposite of everything God tells us to do. <laughs> So you can tell a lot of times who someone worships by how they're acting. And I don't mean like what they're struggling with. I mean, like, what do they do on a regular basis? And a lot of times that right there, you need a lot of discernment for. Because a lot of times we meet people, we don't know everything that's going on. So we have to pray about it and then be directed as, you know, and then act on the direction that we're given. So, uh, what do you guys think? Do you guys have a more systematic idea of worship? Have you heard this before? I don't hear this in church. Mostly what I hear in church is worship is going to church. <laughs> and that's not the case. Worship is, Going to church is part of worship, but it isn't all of worship. So, just something to think about as you're going along in your day. I would like to say thanks for joining me. If you liked it, share the video. If you didn't, you can comment at the bottom. We can talk about it. All right, guys. Remember to read your Bible and pray, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.